Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Been a while since I've done one of these videos. Um, and this is going to be a draw with me. So it's going to be very chatty. Um, just a lot of me talking at you. So um, if you're into that, go ahead and grab some popcorn and sit down. Maybe draw alongside me as this is a draw with me video or do something else. It's fine. Um, or if you just want the nice video, some relaxing video, and you want to put on some music of your own, that's fine too. You can do that. I'm not there to stop you. Well, let's just get into the video, and then I will talk at you there. And by the way, yes, I am in my pajamas, so it's nighttime. Uh, and I, I don't care enough to change. Plus, my child is sleeping in my room and I don't want to wake her up, so. Okay, welcome to the voiceover. Um, so, here in this drawing, um, I am just drawing a couple of things that felt very Parisian to me because I drew this before I was going to be going on um, a big trip to Europe so I was just kind of feeling the vibes and so I just wanted to think draw things that uh, felt European and Parisian and such um, so that's why uh, I chose some of the items that I did in this spread as you will see it unfold um, so yeah I just wanted to do a little catch-up video um, you know it, I did my last Draw With Me video um, about almost two years ago, um, and if you've been watching me since then, then perhaps you recall that in that video I um, mentioned that my dad had passed away. Um, so I was thinking that, you know, I might just kind of give some updates on that um, and how I'm doing with that, as well as some other life updates, so maybe we'll just do some housekeeping. And I'll start with the general life updates. So, um, one of the big ones is that my, me and my family moved. We bought a house. Um, we are in actually a different county now in Southern California. So we moved pretty far away from where we were living before. Um, and we've been here since, I, I think we had our big moving day in like mid-February of last year, but we weren't fully moved in and out of the old house until March. So um, March will be a year since we were been fully moved in and out of our old place. Um, so the house is pretty cool. Uh, nothing, you know, really crazy about it. We got it um, at a decent, enough price because there's just a lot of things on the house that need to be maintenance and um, updated and so um, you know but there's nothing really uh, big or structural that needs to be taken care of with the house so um, we thought it would be a good move for us to um, buy this house um, and move out of our rental. Um, and we kind of had to at the time. We actually weren't planning to move right at the time that we bought. Um, we were planning to wait a little while longer, but uh, basically I was, me, me and my husband were splitting the rent with some relatives and one of those relatives passed away. Um, and so we weren't going to be able to stay at our old place anymore. And the rental prices where we were living in San Diego were just insane probably like triple what they were two or three years ago and so it just didn't make sense for us to try to rent again um, and move somewhere in San Diego so um, when we were looking to buy we just had to move we, we had to look further out for something that was in our price range since we didn't have the savings that we wanted yet to buy in San Diego so anyways now we're here and we got a dog um, his name is Geronimo and I sometimes like to call him Jerry because I think it's very funny that a dog uh, has a name that kind of sounds like a 40 year old retired well not even, 40 year olds aren't retired uh, a retired white man 
Um, and I, I don't know, it just sounds like a funny name, like a name that isn't for a dog. Um, so yeah, we have a dog. His name is Jerry. He's a blue healer. Um, and he is very needy. He's very needy. Um, but yeah, it took some time for uh, my dog and cat to get acclimated to each other. For the most part, they, they get along pretty well now. Uh, but sometimes... Jerry gets on my cat Lizzie's nerves and she asserts herself and Jerry gets very scared um, so I have to kind of step in and be the mediator <laughs> um, and be like hey kids break it up um, so yeah but overall they're doing pretty good together um, we started potty training my daughter she's two now um, and so yeah, she's, she's potty training. I think it's going fairly well for the most part. Um, she does pretty well when she's not at home, but when she gets home, she's a little bit more lazy about it. Um, but she did just start daycare a few weeks ago. And, um, since she started daycare, she's been a lot better when she gets home. Cause I think she just has a little more structure. Um, at the daycare for, for, you know, going to the bathroom. So, um, yeah. Uh, and we, I feel like last time I talked about sleep training and sleep and babies and stuff. Um, and like uh, sleep training with my daughter has been an ongoing journey, uh, and ongoing process. Uh, so we, she was doing pretty good with her sleep up until recently uh, when she started, like, I think her two-year molars are coming in. And so that's kind of like threw a wrench and everything. So that's why she's actually in my room sleeping now as opposed to in her own room like she normally would be. Um, so I'm hoping her two-year molars come in soon and we can uh, get back on that sleep training wagon um and i'm sure being going to daycare isn't helping with the whole sleep training thing i'm sure that's throwing her off too so i kind of wanted to talk about um my whole grieving process and and depression and stuff like that because i feel like it's very relevant um to you know just my general channel i mean it's pretty much the whole reason i haven't been posting these past almost two years um so basically my dad passed um about almost two years ago he lived alone um and he lives pretty much in the area where i'm living now um and he he he's had health problems for a very very long time um pretty pretty much my entire life uh he he's had health problems mind you for the most part self-inflicted health problems so you know there's that um but yeah so he was living on his own and uh we the, the, there was an autopsy done but the the results of the autopsy weren't very clear in my opinion it just said that there was a cardiac event i believe is what it said and there wasn't really much information as far as what that meant um and m my family has told me conflicting stories because i think they're trying to like kind of ease ease the blow of the, the manner of my father's death so uh, you know it's just very unclear to me um how that all went down but uh anyways it it, it really hit me pretty hard because um, being that a lot of his health issues were self-inflicted, um, I hadn't been talking to him for quite some time. Um, and that really hurt me because I was really, I, I had a pretty good relationship with my dad um, when I was growing up, but it, it just frustrated me to see um, uh, him, you know, just making self-destructive decisions. So I wasn't talking to him at the time. Um, it sounded like he was doing a little bit better, um, prior to his, his passing. 
um, but I wasn't quite at the point yet where I was ready to, um, you know, jump back into a, you know, relationship type thing, you know what I mean? Um, I, w I wasn't quite there yet where I was willing to, to put the trust in him that he was going to make better decisions. And so, uh, this all happened during the height of the pandemic before, um, there was a vaccine. Well, like the vaccine had already been approved and they were starting to roll it out, but it was only for, um, elderly and I think like immunocompromised or something like that. Um, so pretty much only my grandparents had it at that time. So, um, I, I, me and my husband and my daughter, we had basically had no contact with anybody up until that point. Um, and that includes my father. And so, um, it just hurt even more, like, knowing that my dad never got to meet my child. Um, and I know he, he was kind of cleaning himself up so that he could meet her when, you know, the pandemic was a little bit calmer and, and th it was safe to, to meet her. But, um, you know, so that was just something that's been really hard for me to, um, you know, c cope with to, you know, um, yeah. So once I found out that my dad had passed, it kind of just felt like, I had a 10,000 pound weight sitting on my chest all the time um, and everything felt so incredibly hard um, and I would have moments where I wanted to distract myself from all of that and I would try to work on some hobbies, I would try to do some art but um, it was like every time I attempted to put effort towards something um, like I just felt this deep weight in my chest weighing me down um, and so I would just start to get tired and I would have to stop and just go lay down on the couch and watch a movie and um, it, I was having trouble even doing the most basic tasks like uh, brushing my teeth or I don't know, doing the dishes or whatever, um, even though I'm, you know, not to say that the dishes is like super easy, but it's like one of those basic functioning things, um, that people need to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, I was just trying to keep my head above water for a long time and keeping my child alive was the best I could do. It was like anything beyond that felt like a Herculean task. Um, and so I, it, this had been going on for some time, nine months, maybe almost a year. And, you know, I, I'm lucky to have some friends who were very supportive and encouraged me to get help. Um, and so one of the things that I was having trouble with was, um, I'm, because of the pandemic, I was on state insurance at the time, and um, I was having trouble finding a doctor who was going to take my insurance, um, because not all doctors in the United States do take uh, government-sponsored insurance. And so um, I have a friend who works in healthcare, and so she helped me to find a doctor um that would take my insurance and china if you're listening to this thank you very much i really appreciate you um and i had another friend who kept checking up on me and making sure that like she was holding me accountable for scheduling that appointment and making sure i went um and uh, latana shout out <laughs> so uh yeah and so i finally got into the doctor this was around the time that we were moving like shortly before we moved so this was like january or february of last year um i finally managed to get into the doctor and i uh told them my situation and i was just like i i think i'm at the point where i do need antidepressants because i can't i can't do this i have uh struggled with depression 
for a long time but it's been like very you know not super intense but it's just like this constant you know undercurrent um feeling that i've had for a super long time um and i've managed to deal with that uh but uh, i was at the point where i was just like i i can't function so i I need to get on antidepressants and so um the doctor agreed she was like yeah it sounds like you're dealing with a lot of uh situational stuff and depression so she said you know i'll prescribe it um she also encouraged uh talking to a therapist which uh, i i still need to do um so i'm working on it (laughs) um yeah it's, it's a work in progress guys um yeah so uh yeah i i started my antidepressants and um i am feeling a whole world of difference with um i'm on well putrin by the way um i like am feeling the way i imagine most people feel every day you know like even before my dad passed like even before i had a child um i felt like like it was just too difficult for me to do like the tasks that i had to do like go to work and then come home and do tasks that it's like you know like were kind of optional like for example like i said doing the dishes folding the laundry like eventually i would get to it but like most days i was so just exhausted i i couldn't bear to do that stuff i i was just like i I, I can't I, I need to just sit down on the couch and watch a movie because like I am so uh, exhausted from life um, but now I can like go to work I, I like I get up early um, I do something productive like I, I have now set myself some morning chores so I try to get all my morning chores done before my daughter wakes up and then i get ready for work i get my daughter ready for daycare we i drop her off i go to work on my lunch break sometimes i try to work on a project or something um and then i come home well i i leave work i pick up my daughter then i come home and sometimes i'll make dinner depending on the situation or i'll just like i don't know scrape together something to eat um and then i'll get everything ready for the next day and then, you know, depending on the time, I try to work on a project like what I'm doing now. Like I'm filming this at almost 10 o'clock at night. I'm not filming this. I'm recording this. Sorry. Um, so like these are things that like m- my entire life would have been impossible for, for me to do. Um, like I remember working... I think it technically was a part-time job, but it was just almost full-time. Like, you know, it was one of those where you're technically part-time, so they don't have to give you insurance, but like, you're just barely pushing it to be a full-time employee, you know? So I was like, you know, working that job. I was doing volunteering. um, And, you know, like just between those two things and then like, you know, hanging out with friends and whatever else I needed to do between those things like I would be so dead exhausted this is when I was only like 19 I was so dead exhausted all the time um I would fall asleep in my living room all the time um so yeah um so basically I I feel like I'm functioning how most normal people function every day uh, which is such a, a, a wild thought, wild thought to me. Never thought I would get here. Um, yeah, so, uh, I, I wanted to talk about some, some random thoughts, uh, you know, just kind of branching off from this, um, I want to talk about some random thoughts that I've, I've come across, um, throughout the past, you know, year or so things I've been mulling over. Um, one of them is that, 
uh, like I, I, it's crazy how now my, my daughter is, like I said, a little bit over two and she's starting to get into like certain movies and for a while she was really into Finding Nemo. Now it's Cars, but for a while she was really into Finding Nemo. Um, and like all of a sudden I started to have this epiphany that like I'm, I'm turning into Marlin. I, I, I'm watching this movie and I am becoming Marlin. And I was like, I really need to like chill out. Cause after my dad passed, I, um, started to have like, well, not even after just my dad passed, but like after I had a kid, my anxiety shot up. And then after I had, after my dad passed, I, anxiety shot up. It was like 200 fold. Um, like my anxiety was at the peak of what it's ever been to the point where like I, I like the, the flipping, the flipping algorithm, uh, you know, it learns that you have a kid and it starts showing you all this stuff about kids. Well, and then it, you know, true crime tends to be very popular. So then you see something about something bad that happened to a kid in the news or something. And you're like, well, I got to know what happened. And so I click on it and then it tells me about something terrible that happened to, to, you know, a kid. And then I'm like worried about my daughter. But well, then the algorithm was like, oh, you liked that video? Let me show you more. So it's constantly showing me more videos of terrible things that have happened to young children. And I, I've had to start like just telling the algorithm to stop recommending me this stuff because it literally would have me so like anxious about everything uh, for my daughter like worried that any little thing like could potentially like she she would die like not even i'm not even exaggerating like worried that she would die um and obviously like that worry concerned was amplified by my own father passing i was like i can't i can't lose her too um so you know and it's like i knew these that this it, like these were my thoughts but like I just couldn't stop it and then it was like once I saw like, like I literally was like I almost feel like I want to keep her in like a little plastic bubble but I know that's that's not that's going to do more damage than just letting her do something and her potentially getting hurt like it's going to do more damage to her psychologically if I just keep her in like a little bubble and then I'm like watching Finding Nemo and Marlon you know he he lost his other kids he lost his wife and he's like I you know obviously psychologically maybe he, he doesn't have a conscious thought of this but unconsciously he's like I can't lose Nemo too I have to protect him at all costs and so he protects him from literally everything to the point where like Nemo resents him and he goes off in this adventure and Marlon he has like such bad anxiety he's worried about every little thing being dangerous and like you know p potentially hurting him or his family uh, or people he cares about and you know anyways I'm like holy cow I'm becoming Marlin and so I I've been just like trying to just recognize when I'm having these thoughts of like just doom doom and gloom doom spiral and I'm trying to be like you know that that is the worst case scenario it's most likely not gonna happen and you know sometimes you just have to let things ride out uh and and you know m m more than likely everything's gonna be fine and your t child will be better off for it like i'm having to tell myself these thoughts um so yeah man it's just crazy like uh, you're still learning things from these disney movies uh that i used to watch as a kid now my kid's watching them and i'm still learning from them um so yeah, in other news, uh, I, I started, oh, I, I didn't mention earlier, I started working, uh, I, I got a job. Um, I'm not going to say where at because I don't want to dox myself, um, but basically it's an office job and so I've had a lot more time to listen to audiobooks. I also listen to podcasts, um, but you know, I try to mix it up with an audiobook every now and then. Um, and I listened to this book called The Compound Effect. Um, and it like, if you haven't read it, you, you need to, I don't care what you, I don't care what you're trying to do in life. Just read it. 
because uh, it, it's such a good book. But basically, he talked about how, like, the key, like, the key to success isn't like, like, big sprints, rise and grind, like, you know, being busy, work, 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 um, or even just like, you know doing a bunch of work and then getting tired and then doing a bunch of work and he said he was like talking about how like the key to success in anything is doing small like like working at something in small increments but consistently because even small amounts of progress is progress um and like this just really um like you know, really struck me because I've always, um, been the kind of person that, like, like, I'm not going to work on a painting if I don't have two or three hours uninterrupted. Well, I'm at a point in my life where I don't have two or three hours interrupted and I probably won't for like the next 20 some odd years. Um, and so this book was talking about how like, uh, basically, okay, like, like here's what really clicked for me in this book about what he was describing so he was talking about how like when people have a goal for example they want to learn piano oftentimes they will like put it off because you know either they didn't start learning it when they were five so they'll never be good um at it or um, they don't have enough time to dedicate to it. They don't have a, a, a lot of uninterrupted time to dedicate towards practicing the piano. So they just don't do it until like maybe they're retired or whatever. And he was saying that if you just started learning the piano, like even at, let's say 35 and you started putting in, uh, 10 minutes a day and I'm, I'm making up numbers cause I don't remember the exact numbers of what he said. I'm just giving an example. Um, but let's say like you put in 10 minutes a day and did that consistently over the years. Uh, then by the time you retire, you will have had 30 years more practice than if you had never started at all. And I think that was like, once he said that, that was like, whoa, holy cow. Like he's so right. He's so right. So that really like helped to fix my mindset towards um and my hobbies and because i have so many things that i want to do like not only do i want to draw and paint i want to learn languages i want to sew i would like to learn the piano um or instruments etc um but i often feel so overwhelmed because i don't have even an hour block of time in a week that is uninterrupted. So recently I, I had reassessed my schedule before uh, my daughter started daycare, right? And I was like trying to figure out like when I had time in the day. And I found that literally the only time I had to do any projects with un uninterrupted was on my lunch break at work. And at the time I only had a 30 minute lunch break. So I was like, okay, well, I guess that's my time to do pr projects or work on stuff. And so uh, I started working on projects on my lunch break. Sometimes it was learning a language, sometimes it was drawing, sometimes it was just a personal project like putting together a photo book, which is something I wanted to do for my family. Uh, and so like at least then I'm like making progress on things that I didn't have time to uh, dedicate before. Um, and so now my daughter's in daycare so I can take my full lunch hour and it's uninterrupted. Um, and so I, I even have a little bit more time to, to do things like I was able to edit this video on one of my lunch breaks. Um, and so it's just like really helped to, to fix my mindset and it gives me that opportunity to do things that I enjoy and help me like feel like fulfilled and re-energized um so i'm not frustrated when i'm at home because like all i all i ever get to do in my free time is chores like at least i'm like making progress on things that like are important to me and and make me happy um and i'm not just feeling like all i ever get to do is work and and clean <laughs> you know um like so many 
so many people uh, do. Um, so anyways, I started this challenge called the 20 for 20 challenge. Um, it's from the learn to paint podcast. It's a podcast I started listening to recently. Um, and basically like it, it's basically like taking, I don't think they know. I don't think whoever invented this challenge knows that this is basically the compound effect, but I'm basically how I'm thinking of it is it's essentially the compound effect, but applied to art. And so the, the challenge is that basically you dedicate 20 minutes a day to, you know, doing your craft. And after 20 minutes, you stop what you're doing and you take a photo of your progress. I started doing this challenge in January. I've missed a couple days. I probably will just tack those days on to the end of the challenge um, and do a little more. But yeah, I've been trying to do uh, 20 minutes of drawing or painting or whatever um, and I try to do it in the morning um, so that way it's kind of just like I, I get it done first thing and uh, like and then I don't forget to do it basically I like that it's 20 minutes because it's a big enough chunk of time that I feel like I can make some progress on something but it's also a small enough chunk of time that it's like accomplishable because I think if it was 30 minutes and I'd be like oh my gosh it's like so long who had 30 minutes like that's a whole tv show or whatever podcast um or if it was 15 minutes and 10 or 15 minutes it might not feel like enough time to actually like make progress on something so I feel like 20 minutes is kind of like a sweet spot to be honest I'm retraining my brain to do like to to have that focused time and like it's honestly it's been really hard for the first couple weeks because like I get into this drawing and then I I find myself at like the 10 minute mark of drawing I literally start to I like look at the clock and I'm like am I almost done yet and I'm like man no it's only been 10 minutes so then I, I you know I got to keep going and then eventually you know I get to that 20 minute mark um but like my I'm just so rusty that I've been having a hard time getting into that mode of like just getting into the flow of it but I feel like this morning I I got into it a little bit easier um so I think that's progress. So I think that's been really good for me. And it's like one of the, like it's kind of helped me to find a way to keep that art habit up. Good. I like the concept and um, I think I'm going to keep doing it uh, even after the challenge. So um, I, I, I feel like I want to keep posting like right now I'm trying to post as often as I can to update on the challenge maybe every couple days I'm posting but um, perhaps when the challenge is over I'll keep going with this 20 minutes a day thing and then I'll just be posting more on my Instagram of like the little progress uh, shots and finished pieces and stuff like that so um, yeah linked in the description if you want to follow on my Instagram in my previous draw with me video I talked about how I was kind of having an existential crisis with my style and I was trying to like find my voice again. So I s kind of like took some time to look inward and figure out what I like. I, I think one thing that kind of was like a little, a little key to unlocking this for me was um, I bought this shirt on Etsy that was like a bubblegum pink. It was a vintage shirt and it had this really awesome like collar that, was, that had like scallop detailing or whatever. Um, I don't know what it's called, but, um, and I, I wore it with like some bright red lipstick and I was like, is this too much? And I asked my friend, she was like, no, that's awesome. I love it. And I was like, okay. It kind of like encouraged me like, oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I really liked the combo. Like, I realized that the, the color was a little more in the, um, s clear spring family of, uh, color palettes and so if you if you know about like the season thing i kind of started to try to look for clothes that were a little more in like the clear spring palette um and then i started seeing a little bit more of like interior design that incorporated that kind of palette um 
and like had some of the elements that I like so anyways I've been kind of like starting to slowly like find what I like again and find my voice again and so I'm working on kind of um getting my clothing and my uh home decor to like kind of fit that to to feel the way I feel um and so yeah it's a work in progress and I'm making progress in the area and it makes me so so happy uh last note is that uh me and my husband went to Europe earlier this year and I'm not going to get too into it because I'm actually going to be doing a series of videos about my trip to Europe uh the next video that will be coming up on my channel is actually going to be an art haul um, well, not art, art supply haul, and it'll be lots of art supplies that I got while I was in Europe, as well as like art related uh, things that I got um, from various museums and whatnot. So um, I'm very excited about that. The other video is going to be kind of like a, a vlog plus a sketchbook tour. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, yeah, if you've watched to this point, I appreciate you so, so much. Uh, thank you uh, for listening to my ramblings. Um, I, I, really, I really could talk until the cows come home. Most people are trying to get out of my house. Uh, and I just won't let them leave because I, I, you know, I just like to talk these days. I don't know. Can't stop it. Uh, I think my husband has infected me that way. Um... <laughs> Anyways, uh, the video is over, so I gotta go. Let's go back to the um, outro clip thingy. Okay, bye. All right, guys. Well, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's been so nice, kind of catching up with you, working on getting back in the groove of things, and um, hopefully, I'll, you'll be seeing me in some more videos soon. My battery's dying, so I gotta go. In the meantime, don't quit your daydream. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.